page 11 of Algebra 1B Credit 2. Uh, I'm going to assume that you've read the Explore and Explain section, and if you haven't done so, please go back and uh, read through it because they do a pretty good job of explaining everything in terms of how to classify polynomials. And um, this isn't the most important skill, but um, it is definitely useful to, to learn the academic language um, because like any language you want to know or you want to accurately be able to describe um, what you're doing to which term and, and stuff like that so so that when the teacher is explaining it or when, when you're trying to explain it to the teacher or somebody else um, you're using the correct vocabulary and the correct language um, and so uh, we're going to jump into question number two here and, and again I'm going to assume that you've read the explore and explain sections I will do a little bit of explaining myself, but uh, definitely go back and read those sections if you haven't done so already. So here we have an expression here. We, we call it an expression because it doesn't have an equal sign, so it's not an equation. But here I can tell we have one, two, three terms. And the way I tell is, is because terms are usually separated by a plus or minus sign. In this case, we have two plus signs. So uh, which divides this up into three terms. Uh, so this polynomial has three terms, and we classify it as a trinomial because it has three um, three terms. And just like a tricycle has three wheels, we call this a, a trinomial. And so um, let's describe each specific term here. The first term, the 3x squared y squared, um, the degree, the degree of the term, uh, let's just write that out, 3x squared y squared, is 4. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take all the exponents there and add them together. So 2 plus 2 is 4. Therefore, we say that the first term there has a degree of 4. So if we do the same thing with the second term there, the degree of the term 3xy squared, we're going to call that a degree of three since x you can't really see it but it kind of technically has a degree of one x to the power of one we don't write one because that would be redundant uh, but one plus two is three so we say that the second term there has a degree of three and the third term there five x y is is um has a degree of two because uh, x has one degree and y has one degree one plus one equals two and so all together we say that the degree of the trinomial that we have here uh, is uh, 4 because the largest degree is the largest degree of the three terms right um, out of these three terms 4 is the highest therefore we just say that it has a um, degree of 4 we keep with the highest we don't actually add them all together so that's question number two question number three well, we're going to do more of the same. The polynomial has two terms, right? It's separated by this one subtraction sign there. So we have one, two terms. And we classify this because we have two terms. We classify this as a binomial, just like a bicycle has two wheels. This expression has two terms, so we call it a binomial. And so the first term there, the degree of the term, eight a b to the second power, is Three, since a has a degree of one, b has a degree of two, one plus two is three. For that second term there, uh, the second term uh, negative three a squared b, and we want to keep that sign uh, with that term. This is also three, since a has a degree of two, b has a degree of one, two plus one is three. And so the degree of this binomial is three, since the largest uh, it is the largest degree of the two terms. Okay, uh, and question number four. Uh, we have x squared y minus nine x to the fourth power y squared plus three x y. So the so this one is separated by a subtraction sign there and an addition sign there. So we have one, two, three terms, and we classify this as a trinomial again because it has three wheels like a tricycle. And the degree of the first term there, x squared y, is 3, since 2 plus 1 is 3. 
the degree of the second term, negative 9x to the power 4, y to the second power, is 6, uh, since 4 plus 2 is 6. And then the degree of the third term there, 3xy, is 2, since 1 plus 1 is 2. So the degree of this trinomial is 6, since it's the largest degree of the three terms. Okay, so in the next page, we're going to actually be talking about um, writing polynomials in standard form. And essentially what standard form is, is, is uh, we want to keep, uh, we want to be able to write expressions in a standard manner, right? Um, just like English, in English you, you know, you have a certain order, a subject verb agreement order, um, in terms of math, we want to keep everything the same, too. Just so when we read um, the math writing of different people, uh, as long as there's some kind of an agreement to the order, it, it just kind of makes it easier to read. And in this case, the standard form, uh, we, wanna, we want the term with the highest degree to be first. So in, in question number one, right, we have four terms here. The x to the power of 5 has the highest degree, so that goes first, x to the power of 5. The next one is right here, 4x to the power of 3, so <coughs> we're going to put plus 4x to the power of 3. The next term is uh, x to the power of 2, so minus 3x squared, and then the constant goes last, plus 10. And that's really all there is to um, writing polynomials in standard form. Um, so let's go with this next problem. Here's the, the high, the, the term with the highest degree here, so negative 3y squared plus 18y to the power of 5 plus 10y. Okay. Question number 3. Oh, we forgot the, um, we forgot the, uh, the second part to each question here. We, they want the leading coefficient, so whatever is in front of the first term, in this case, um, that x to the power of 5, even though it's not written, uh, the leading coefficient is 1. So uh, we don't write the 1 because, again, it's redundant. But uh, in this case, that leading coefficient is 1. And for this question number 2, the leading coefficient is negative 3, since it's the coefficient in front of the y squared. Okay, question number 3. Okay, so in this case, we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms, and so let's try to figure out which one has the highest degree. So it looks like this one, 7x to the power of 5, this one's next, minus 5x to the power of 4, this one's third, uh, plus 2x to the power of 3, here's the next one, plus 4x squared, and then that constant goes last, minus 3. And the leading coefficient in this case is 7. Question number four. So let's see. Uh, I think this one has the highest degree there. 14 t to the power of 7. This one's next. Minus 10 t to the power of 5. And then this one plus 7 t squared and then minus 14. So here's the leading coefficient 14. Okay. Um, we are next going to move on to page 14. Then this next page here, they explain three. Uh, they're talking about simplifying polynomials. So again, another skill that you might want to uh, review before we continue. Um, but here are the problems where we're going to be doing that. <clears throat> so looking at question one, we are asked to combine like terms. And so um, basically what a like term is when we have variables with exponents is uh, we have to match up the variables with the same kind of exponents. In this case, x to the power of 2 is here, and here's another one with x, with x to the power of 2, but x to the power of 3 is something different altogether. So let's keep that straight. So we're going to add the x to the power of 2's, uh, or actually, no, let's go ahead and write the this, this term first, because it's the one with the highest degree. So 5x to the power of 3, there's nothing else to combine with it. And then, oops, sorry about that. And then we're going to do, we're going to combine the <coughs> x to the power of 2's. So in this case we have one of these and two of these, so 1 plus 2 is 3x to the power of 2. Okay, question number 2. 
So we have a bunch of terms here, but let's go through this and try to figure out um, all the different terms here. So here's x to the power of 5. There's no other x to the power of 5, so we'll keep that straight. Um, and then the next one with this, uh, that are like terms are this or this one and this one, the x to the power of 4s. And then lastly, the constant 16 and 9 are what we're going to combine. So, But let's start with the blue. So there's nothing to com combine for the negative 3x to the power of 5, so I'm just going to rewrite that. And then next, maybe we'll just keep the color scheme going here. We're going to combine the x to the power of 4s. And in this case, look at this. Negative 2x to the power of 4, positive 2x to the power of 4. So they're going to cancel out. So you end up with 0. So there's nothing actually to write. So I'm going to move on to the greens here. 16 plus 9 gives me 25. So here's my, here's my new uh, expression here once we combine like terms. Okay, let's see. Moving on to question number 3. All right, once again, let's look through this. Um, we want to combine like terms. So let's... Let's start with um, let's start with the a to the power of two. So in this case, we got this three a to the power of two, and then minus a to the power of two. There's one, um, and then we got the uh, a b's and minus five a b, and then lastly we have the constants 4 squared and 10. So I know 4 squared has a exponent, but um, if you simplify that, 4 squared is just 4 times 4, which is 16. So it's still a constant. So let's go ahead and, and rewrite this. So we got 3a squared minus a squared. So you have three of those, and then you're taking away one of those, so you end up with 2a squared. And then if we deal with the red the red uh, terms there, AB minus 5AB. So um, you're taking away, your, so it's essentially 1 minus 5, which gives us uh, minus 4AB. And then lastly, if we combine the green terms, 4 squared is 16. So if this is 16, 16 plus 10 gives me 26. So here is um, here's the next, so this is the answer to question number 3. Question number four. Oh, look at this. So this one's a bit tricky. So we have to be very careful about this. But let's let's look through this uh, piece by piece. We got a um, we got a p to the second power and q to the second power. Um, let's see. Let's go with uh, let's go with that first. So we we got one of these. Uh, any others with a p and the p squared and a q squared? So there's another one. Uh, let's go to the next one, p squared q cubed. So there's that, p squared q cubed, and then lastly a p cubed. Okay, so um, color coding it makes it so much easier, right? Because you can immediately see that we're going to combine these two first. And look at that, they're opposites. you got a positive and negative version, so they're going to go away. So we don't even need to rewrite that. So let's move on to the red ones. we got negative 3 plus... Four, which just ends up being p to the second power, q to the third power. And then we're just going to rewrite that green one because there's nothing else to combine with that one, p, q. So there, there's my answer for that one. Okay, um, and then we'll move on to the next one. Like read, go ahead and read the, uh, pause the video and read explain 4a if you want. But we're going to evaluate each polynomial for those given values. A equals 3, B equals 5, C equals 10. So let's just plug it in. A equals 3. So in this case, anytime I see an A, I'm going to plug in 3 minus 15. 10 times 3 is 30 minus 15. So you end up with 15. Question number 2, B equals 5. So I'm going to plug in 5 anytime I see a B. So in this case, five, negative 5 times 5 to the power of 3, plus 7 times 5, plus 10. So this is going to be negative 5 times 5 to the power of 3 is 125. And punch into the calculator if you want. Plus 35, plus 10. Negative 5 times 125 will give us negative 625, plus 35 plus 10. And then uh, I'm going to need a calculator for this one. Sorry about that. Um, let's see. Uh, plus 35 plus 10. Negative 625 
gives me negative 580 as the answer. And lastly, this one includes all the different values of ABC here. So 6 times A equals 3, uh, times 5 times 10, plus 4 times 3 squared. And again, if you are confused where I got the 3, 5, and the 10, 3, 5, 10. So let's see here. So 6 times 3, no, 6 times 3 times 5 times 10 gives me 900 plus uh, 4 times 3 squared, which is 9. So 900 plus 4 times 9 is 36. You end up with 936. Okay. And next page, I think it's the last page for this video. Um, you're going to evaluate polynomials based on a given context. So in this case, uh, Nate's client said she wanted to, the width of every room in her house increased by 2 feet and the length um, 2w decreased by 5 feet. So again, um, the width is going to be increased by 2 feet and the length, or 2w, minus 5. And so uh, the current width of the kitchen is 16 feet. What is the area of the new kitchen? So since area is essentially length times width, and they've given us the length and the width, here's the width, here's the length, we're just going to multiply those together. So we have this term here. They've done the multiplying for us, 2w squared minus w minus 10, and they tell us that the width is 16 feet. So all we're doing is plugging in 16 uh, anytime we see a w. So 2 times 16 squared minus 16 minus 10. Let me zoom in here real quick, just so you can see it a little clearer. 16 squared. Can't do that in my head. Punch into the calculator. We get 256. So 2 times 256 minus 16 minus 10 minus 16 minus 10. We end up with 486. So the area of the new kitchen is 486 square feet.